Hi, I'm Catherine Reed Day, and coming up next on the St. Paul Forum, I'm talking with Jeff Freeland Nelson of Play From Scratch, a local, brand new toy company. That's coming up next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Catherine Reed Day, and joining me today is Jeff Freeland Nelson of the company Play From Scratch. Welcome, Jeff. Hi. Hi. How exciting! Um, I know you from a different part of your life. Uh, you've been you've been here in the Twin Cities for a few years. We're going to talk about this brand new toy company, but tell us a little bit about where you came from, how you got your start. Well, uh, you know, really, you have to go back to my childhood, of course, to talk about toys. Okay. And so um, I'm from Iowa. Uh, like everyone in the Twin Cities, um, and came up here for college uh, to study theater at Hamlin, uh, which sort of began my love affair with creativity and how to uh, be a creative person, how to do creative things, how to build a, a creative community. So after college, uh, I did what every good theater major does. I uh, started a theater company. Oh, okay. Uh, so, you know, pulled out my visa card and funded a few shows and had a lot of fun. Uh, but after doing that for a few years, realized that uh, there's really there, there wasn't at that time a lot of money in the small theater business to mm -hmm. uh, to keep that alive, uh, and got more into uh, arts and cultural development, mm -hmm. um, and uh, really pursued that. Started a, an organization that's now called the Arts and Culture Partnership of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, and after a while, uh, Mayor Norm Coleman at the time I think was sick of me bothering him about arts projects. So I became uh, the cultural development director for the city. Uh, did that for several years. And again, this all sort of flowed through this whole idea of sort of the intersection of public policy and creativity. Mm -hmm. So did that for a few years, worked at McNally Smith College for a few years, uh, went off to get my policy degree at Harvard, uh, came back to work at NPR, uh, and after seven years there decided to jump into the unknown and start this toy company. So we have a brand new baby company that is called Play From Scratch. You're the founder. And uh, tell us a little bit about where the idea for this, this toys that we're looking at, where did it come from? You said it came a little bit out of your experience with childhood play, it sounds like. Absolutely. You know, like all the great ideas um, I found uh, starting this company, it wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. um, it was really my parents' idea. Uh, oh. I vividly remember when I was eight years old, uh, my parents gave me a cardboard box for my birthday. And inside the cardboard box, there was a roll of tape and some wire and some string. Uh, that was my birthday present. And I remember thinking, this is the best present ever. Uh, because really what it was, was an acknowledgement on my parents' part that they wanted me to be creative. They wanted me to make my own toys. And so instead of having to scrounge around the house and find you know, dad's duct tape down in the shop and steal it to go make stuff, they were giving me the tape. Um, and so I made all sorts of crazy inventions uh, from that present. And then 32 years later, I realized I wanted to do, in essence, the same thing for my kids. So you have small children? I do. I have a son who's four and a little girl who is one and a half. And so you've already, uh, you were doing some, um, what do you call that, prototyping with <laughs> your, is that sort of part of where the idea for the company came from? Yeah, I mean, really, it hit me, uh, you know, they say it's sort of inspiration strikes, and it, it was a little over a year ago that I was playing with my son, and we were just playing with very simple materials, tubes and funnels and, and uh, having a blast. And it made me think about that present I got 32 years ago, and I thought, why doesn't someone start a company uh, encouraging kids to do this kind of play, this creative play, this hands-on play with raw materials. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the day that Play From Scratch was born. I walked downstairs and told my wife I was starting a toy company. <laughs> and now that makes it sound easy, like it's an overnight success. But um, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the steps that you took to actually create a company? Um, you know, how did you as you look back on this year, how did you put it together? The, way, the reason I called you is because someone mentioned to me you'd put together a great advisory board mm -hmm. 
So it was that one of the one of the elements in putting the company together, and who's on that advisory board? No, uh, really, that was the, the the smartest thing that I did when I started, and I will say that there are a whole lot of things that I've done over the past year that have not been <laughs> so smart. But one of the smartest things I did was start this advisory board. And really, you know, we're uh, Play from Scratch is a for-profit company. It's very simple. We don't need a board. Uh, but I realized from my nonprofit experience that having a group of people that are the smartest people you can find who have insight and a diversity of opinions and experience in the area that you're trying to solve a problem. And we are trying to solve a problem with Play From Scratch, even though we're a for-profit. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that that was one of the best ways to make sure that you stayed on track. So I put together a, a group of uh, board members who are community members, they're folks with PhDs, they're people with educational backgrounds, they're people that are doing this kind of work in different ways, uh, people in the nonprofit world, the government world, the for-profit world, uh, pulled them together and just said, hey, are you willing to you know, volunteer a little bit of your time to help do this? And surprisingly, uh, they did. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that has been a really, really fantastic experience. And they have pulled me back from the brink a few times of making bad decisions. You know, I come to them and say, hey, what do you, what do you think of this product? And they say, you know, cool idea, but that's not play from scratch. It's not, uh, it's and, not your mission. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what you said. It's, you know, you're, you're trying to solve a problem, which is, is more like a mission vision dri driven company. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is the why you're, you're in business for? Why, why are you doing this? Well, part of it, I will admit, is a frustration with uh, the state of the toy industry. Uh, you know, as a parent, uh, my house has been flooded with plastic toys. And the more I researched it and, and discovered the way the toy industry works, I discovered that, you know, 80% of the toys in the U.S. are made in China. And we're talking about $23 billion worth of toys that are sold in the U.S. every year. So it's a lot of toys. Uh, and the vast majority of them are made out of plastic. Um, now, they're great toys, and believe me, I love toys. I'm not against toys. Our house is full of toys, and my kids love all sorts of toys, not just this stuff. And I think it would be um, unfortunate if this was all there was in the entire world. So uh, we're not against toys. But what I wanted to do was create an alternative, to create something that was different, and something that was really focused around uh, sort of four big values. Uh, and the, big, the most important one for us is creativity. And so we really dug into this notion of how do you play from scratch where you don't really need toys, you just find stuff around your house and you make your own toys. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really where this, this game was, which is what started it all. I made 24 of these prototypes, delivered them to all of my uh, friends that had kids about the, you know, the right age, uh, right before Christmas last year, and they, it was under all of their Christmas trees. Uh, and this game, which is called Go Creative, the big idea is that you deal two cards, very simple, and it gives you a challenge, a creative challenge. So in this case, it says build a little bicycle. <laughs> and so you just deal the cards, and you say to the kids or adults, whoever you're playing with, build a little bicycle. And then they build it out of anything they can find around the house, plates, mm -hmm. tape, straws, you name it. After that, deal two more cards. So it says alien, and then a pretty alien. So then you build a pretty alien. And you can just go on and on and on with this game. And there are actually many, many other ways to play it. So that was the foundation. Creativity and how did what was the feedback you got after because you were I take it you were giving these to your friends for free and just yep. saying please just try this out. You know it was interesting the the best and we got a lot of feedback and and uh, most of it very positive. The the best feedback I, I received was from a nine year old girl uh, named Winnie and she you know without asking uh, they were on a road trip and they take took the game with them. And Winnie, uh, from the back seat, said to her dad, she said, Dad, this is a really big game in a really little box. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty great. That's pretty cool. Uh, I also heard about kids that were using the game like charades. They were dealing the cards mm -hmm. and then acting out these, uh, these roles. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what I heard from people is, is that it works. Well, and let's talk about why do you think that this idea of play, uh, creative creativity and play, why, do they, why are they so important to us right now? You know, it's interesting, and I think there's a lot more attention being paid to play than ever before. I think for really decades or, uh, or more, we didn't really think about play. It was just that thing that kids did. 
Well, we're starting to realize, and there's a lot of research now emerging around the importance of play and how the way you play helps sort of train your brain for adulthood. Mm -hmm. You know, first and foremost, play is practice for adulthood. You're playing, you're sort of testing boundaries, you're figuring things out. Uh, but more than that, and this is something I discovered, which part of my career, which I completely neglected to mention, which I, I was the technical director at the Children's Museum way back when. Um, and one of the things I discovered when I was at the Children's Museum is that kids are playing because they want to change the world in little ways. They want to see, like, if I push this, will something happen? If I change this, what does that do? Mm -hmm. and, and, and now watching my children, after thousands of hours watching children play at the Children's Museum, now watching my children, I'm really seeing how true this is, that play is a way that children test out their own capacity to make change in the world. Mm -hmm. And so we need to give them the toys and the tools that allow them to do that. So many of the toys that we have now don't do that. You press a button and it does it's something. It's done for you. Yeah. Now. All, it's essentially. All, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the toy is more about the adult who designed it than the kid who's playing with it. Mm -hmm. These are toys where you're saying to the children, you can make anything. And if we can teach them that through this kind of play, you know, what will that mean for them when they're adults? Right. And so uh, to, to the average buyer, they might look at this and say, well, now why in the world do I need to buy these things that you've produced for us, that you've assembled here? Absolutely. Um, so they might go and, you know, they're going to look at this and say, oh, I, I recognize this. This is from a water if, right, exactly. if you can still find a water cooler like this, uh, that's what this is, right? Or this is from the gas station and you, right, it's exactly. a filter for the, okay. What is, what is, tell me a little bit about that idea. Well, in some ways, again, that's part of our mission. You know, we're trying to teach kids that you can make things from everyday objects. So mm -hmm. we want these objects to be slightly familiar. We want them to be things that they see to a certain degree around the house. But we also want to make them sort of ready for a lot of different creative play. So these are very you know, carefully selected. You know, the tubes in the tube of tube are much bigger than the tubes that you'll find around your house. Uh, they're much more sturdy. I mean, everything we make is designed to be reused over and over and over again. These are not mm -hmm. toys that you're going to buy and then immediately recycle because they are all recyclable. You can recycle them, but you're going to play with them for a long time before that. Um, so these are very sturdy, uh, sturdy uh, materials. The other thing, so for example, a cardboard box. And you know, really, there's, again, a lot of attention being uh, paid to cardboard boxes. Kane's Arcade was a video that went viral last year after we started Play From Scratch. But what it really was was a great sort of proof of concept for us about the power of a cardboard box. Well, this is not your average cardboard box. It looks like a cardboard box. But you can actually, you know, as a child, say, well, I want to have a hole here. And you just press a little hole, and there's a triangle. If you want a circle, you put a circle there. Mm -hmm. And then you can do the same on the other side. You can put tubes through here. You can actually fit the boxes into each other. So while it is just a cardboard box, this is not the same cardboard box that you would get at the store. The other thing is cardboard boxes are very expensive if you actually go buy them. Now, again, we're always encouraging you to play with stuff around your house. Do that first. Have a blast. But as far as going out and buying a cardboard box, my first prototype of the world-famous box of boxes which I made for a four-year-old across the street. It was his birthday. Um, I was in a rush. I just went and bought it retail. It cost $50 to oh. put together because boxes are very, very expensive to mm -hmm. buy retail. Mm -hmm. um, so we are buying all of these by the thousands. We obviously can pass that savings along to uh, our co-creators, our customers, uh, so we can offer it very cheaply. Um, you know, a box of boxes. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of value, that, but it may be mysterious to some uh, about that value. What happens um, when the kids look at, let, have you had the experience of kids sort of shopping for what you have, or is it strictly an adult process at this point? I'm just kind of curious about that. Well, that is one of the, another strange thing about the toy industry is that the, the people who are buying the objects, the, the products, are different than who is the, the end user, yeah. which is unique uh, mm -hmm. in the, for toys because you have adults, and it is primarily moms, if you look at the data, mm -hmm. that they're going out and they are shopping for their kids, and then the kids play with it. Now, the kids obviously have a lot of feedback in that process, um, and so it's, it's very interesting to see how kids react to these toys, and we kind of have it backwards. If you want to talk to a person who really gets how awesome a box of boxes or a tube of tubes is or just a bunch of tape, um, talk to the kids. Yeah. The kids get I it know what they think. Uh, immediately. Yeah. I mean, they lose their minds mm -hmm. uh, playing with this in a, in a good way. Um, if you're just joining us, 
I'm speaking with Jeff Freeland Nelson of Play From Scratch, a local toy company. So yeah, the kids uh, really do get this right away. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, and I, I kind of want to go back to the idea of capacity building around creativity. Uh, I want to get to that, and I want to also come back to being a local company. Uh, but what it seems to me that what you're really getting at is that there is a lot of possibility here, and that you're trying to give children a sense of possibility and, and engage that possibility into to, for them to understand what those test limits and and uh, f discover things is that is that part of the mission? Absolutely. You know, we have this crazy notion that creative toys shouldn't come with instructions, mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of creative toys out there that come with instructions. Here's how you should do it. We don't have instructions. We have inspiration inside the tubes and the boxes. We have challenges. Each each product, each like this box of boxes has a unique set of three challenges and every single box of boxes has a different set. So it gives you sort of a challenge like the cards. You'll say build a magnificent dragon out of these boxes. That's our challenge to them. How they build it is completely up to them. We're not going to give them a drawing of the magnificent dragon. We're not going to say, you know, put the tail here and here's what colors the fire should be. Mm -hmm. That's up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, give them the materials. So you put a lot of these materials in front of them. They know how to create. Mm -hmm. Kids are naturally creative. Exactly. Part of our role as adults is really to get out of their way and let them do it, to give mm -hmm. them that little nudge so that they get started. And there is a little nudge, and we've watched this when we've mm -hmm. tested these products. You kind of get them going and then just then sort of back off. Then you step back and let it go. Um, this box of boxes does strike me as just a great gift for Christmas. I've got it on my possible shopping list. Um, but what you, when you think about it, is there an age range you're promoting? Are you basically saying this is a sort of a whatever age to 100? Anyone could want to play with this. How do you see your, your product in the market? On the box, it says uh, ages 4 to 104. Ah, um, okay. And part of that is because we're required. You know, the toy industry is highly regulated. We actually have to put an age group uh, mm -hmm. on the box. Um, the reality is my one-year-old has a blast with these boxes. My one-year-old loves playing with the tubes. You give any child of any age a, mm -hmm. big, card a big, thick, hefty cardboard tube, they're going to have fun with that. Um, so really, it is all ages. There, there have been many times that we've tried to narrow that down. We've tried to say, you know, really, really, what is the age group that is excited about this? And then I'm shocked when we hand this stuff to 15-year-olds and they, they have a blast. They need this kind of thing because it's so structured. Tell us a little bit. I want to go back to being a local toy company. Uh, I, I know we've had a few toy companies here. We used to, Manhattan Toys were mm -hmm. here, weren't they? I don't know where if they even exist anymore, but... Uh, how many toy companies have been founded in Minnesota, and and what was when was the last one founded here? Well, that's a very well. The last one was probably us. So I'll take credit for that. Well, yeah, most recent. Hopefully, yeah. before. Uh, you. <laughs> um, you know, Mindware is a is a great uh, local toy co distributor uh, that started here. There's some great products that have come out mm -hmm. of the Twin Cities. Cuba Maze is a fantastic toy product where you put it's basically a, a, a maze for marbles, mm -hmm. but they're cubes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, done by a local architect. So there's a tradition. I mean, the Twin Cities is a, is a very creative it has, environment. It has, it's always been a creative environment. But uh, and, and as you've thought about those, her, I mean, you've got some principles. You've decided to locate. We're delighted that I'm part of the creative enterprise zone that mm -hmm. is at University and 280 rating out from there. You've located right in the zone. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you didn't know that at the time. We're, but uh, we're trying to actually promote more local uh, manufacturing businesses. What are some of the other principles you're incorporating? And I know you've got recyclable materials. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is about the? Uh, what are some other qualities of the company that are important to you? Well, one of the you know really wonderful, almost accidental things that's happened over the over the course of the year is that, you know, we started looking at manufacturing. You know, we wanted to make these raw materials kits, um, so we started looking at where we could source these raw materials. Uh, my wife, one night, had this idea. Uh, again, all the good ideas came from other people. She said, well, what if we made it all out of recycled and recyclable materials? Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, well, that's crazy. I mean, I'd been to Toy Fair. I'd seen how the toy industry works. I knew that really there's a well-worn path between here and China and that plastic is really the material of choice. For obvious reasons, it's durable. It can make that trip, all of that. Um, and about a week later, I realized she was absolutely right, you know, that we wanted, you know, from a values perspective to create a company that, you know, didn't have a huge carbon footprint, a company that uh, allowed for toys to be recycled, you know, a toy that's durable and can last a long time. You can play, f play with it over and over again, but at the end of its lifespan, it's not going into a landfill. 
And that took us to cardboard and, and paper. Uh, and there's really not a better place you could be located than the Twin Cities when it comes to sourcing uh, and manufacturing using cardboard and paper. <laughs> so 90% of what we sell is made not just in Minnesota, it's made locally, it's made in the Twin Cities. Uh, our tubes are made in Bloomington, uh, the boxes are made in Lakeville. Um, you know, we have very, very close local suppliers that we're working with. Um, so not only are they recyclable, not only are they recycled in the first place, our tubes are 100% recycled material in the first place, and then you can recycle them you know, at the end of its useful life. Uh, they're very, very local. Cool. And so uh, what do you see as the challenges? Obviously, you want to make some, um, some success right now in this prime shopping season. You're hoping for some sales for Christmas, I assume. Uh, I know you've been getting some great publicity. Uh, how are you keeping up? Are you getting some orders? And what's, how's it taken off? You know, it's, it's great. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, more sales are, would be awesome, but we have met and surpassed, uh, you know, our goals far beyond what we uh, anticipated uh, starting, you know, just a little over a week ago. Um, so the orders are coming in. The, the product is moving out the door. Um, you know, I think the real challenge for us is that we're really something different. Um, there's no one else, at least that we have found, uh, out there in the toy industry doing exactly this. There are some fantastic companies that are doing, uh, encouraging kids to play with raw materials. There's one based in Australia called, called Make Do, which encourages kids to play with boxes using plastic connectors. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, this product, using raw materials in play and using uh, recycled and recyclable, uh, durable materials, uh, we think we're, we're the first doing this. So now it's just about making sure people know that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I know you did this press release. Coincidentally, I called you the same day you were putting out the press release. It was great. I'm glad the timing was good. I know you've gotten some other press. What, uh, where do you think people are going? How far out are you? is your uh, base going so far? Are you getting orders out of state, or are they initially just from Minnesota right now? You know, it's fascinating to watch. And one of the, the things that's so exciting, after a year of work and hard work and, you know, pitfalls, and I mean, believe me, uh, I never realized how much work uh, starting a business like this would be, as you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, to get orders. You know, that first order comes in, and you realize, and it was, the first order was, was from a friend in Baltimore. Oh, nice. It's like, okay, wow. wow. So suddenly we're shipping things to Baltimore. Then dealing with shipping. You know, we're shipping this stuff all over, so we're having to manage that. That was another challenge. Um, but the orders are coming from all over. I mean, a lot of them in Minnesota. Um, but, you know, yesterday we took an order from someone in Brooklyn who was giving it as a gift to someone in San Francisco. Oh, nice. And, you know, one of the really amazing tools that we have is social media. Mm -hmm. um, the, the purchasers of toys, the adults, the moms and dads, uncles, aunts, grandparents, they're very connected through social media. So that, for us, is going to be a very important way to have really a two-way conversation uh, with, with our we really don't call them customers, our co-creators, the co people out there yeah, working Yeah, I love with. it that you're calling them co-creators. That's uh, really an empowerment message, and I think that's great. There is a little, I believe there's a little video on your um, website that shows, is it with you and your, it's, it has part of your story. It's it you with your children in the bathtub or something, or am I well, making there, that up? Well, there's a video with a ton of, actually there's one with, my, my son is featured prominently, but yeah, we just had a ton of kids in the warehouse, and we were playing with, with the stuff. And watching, you know, this uh, sort of magnificent mayhem that comes when you put this mm -hmm. kind of material in front of kids. I mean, they just, again, they're almost unstoppable. Yeah, and so I think it, I would recommend that people who are who look at this and kind of go, really, that's what I'm going to buy. Um, but I know that I remember one time when I was first taking my daughter on an airplane, the recommendation was strips of paper, a, a you know, Ziploc bag with strips of paper, paper clips, tape, and a, you know, I, I think. You, Maybe you could have scissors then, I don't know. But right. anyway, but it was absolutely the best thing I ever took on the road with her. And it's such a similar concept. It's basically makes, make your own stuff by having a few tools and keep them occupied. But you know, you're, you're encouraging people to piece things together, be in dialogue, um, be, in, be in interaction. It's interactive play. And then it's, it's building that creative capacity. Well, you know, the, the reality is that the world is full of toys. Mm -hmm. um, and we're the ones, you know, we, the grown-ups, make the distinction between things that are toys and not toys. And, you know, obviously safety is very important. And, you know, our toys are tested like all other toys. We have to send them off and they're tested and, and, and you know, extraordinarily safe. But bigger than that, you know, we need to think about the fact that, 
you know, my one and a half year old daughter doesn't understand the difference between something that's a toy and something that's not a toy. Right. We train them that there are things that are toys and not toys. And I think we need to also train kids that know the reality is that you can. You know, one of the best toys in our home is a couch cushion. We're constantly, you know, <laughs> stripping the couch and making mountains and forts yeah. and, you know, these really fantastic things. Yeah, exactly. And it's all that, it's all that uh, process and uh, imagination. All of our, fa my favorite book is uh, A House of Your Own. It's a really old, old, old book. And it was all these examples of how you create a house of your own. When daddy's reading the newspaper, this is how old it is, right? Uh, he's in a house of his own, you know, and it's it's the same thing, making those cushions out of it. And that's, that's when people feel a sense of, of empowerment. I know another thing about, when I think about what you're building for the future, in addition to a great company, is uh, adults who play well are going to be great employees. Daniel Pink's mm -hmm. research and on Drive, as well as his earlier book, uh, A Whole New Mind, mm -hmm. talks about play as an essential quality for the next century, essentially the one we're in. So it's, uh, it seems to me that you've got, you could really get some more uh, endorsements, if you will, from people the corporate world that says, yeah, we need more kids who play like this. I mean, have you thought of it? I assume some of your advisory board members are there in part for that reason, that they're seeing the potential of the kind of adults you're creating? Absolutely. One of uh, my advisors uh, is now retired, but was a vice president at 3M. Mm -hmm. And something that he likes to talk about is how, you know, they ask engineers at 3M, you know, how did you play as a child? You know, tell us about growing up. And something that they, they love hiring farm kids. And really, one of those reasons, kid, these farm kids had to learn how to solve problems with their hands. Exactly. Um, and so, you know, this, the way you play as a child matters a lot to the way you work as an adult. And I do think you're absolutely right. Play really matters as an adult as, as well. I mean, I find that my level of creativity and engagement with the world is so different now that I'm you know, often, you know, all the time, playing with my kids. Yeah. And I take that uh, to the workplace. And I think a lot of workplaces... Uh, yeah. could benefit from more play. You know, uh, it's Christmas season, so people are buying, so how are they going to get to this product? And there's plenty of time to get uh, it purchased before the holidays? Absolutely. You know, the uh, playfromscratch.com playfromscratch. is, is where you can buy the products. Um, and so, and you know, I should just say that over and over again, playfromscratch.com. Okay. It's also where you can engage with us, where we want, again, everyone get, get to share feedback. with us, you know, not only how, did the, how do you like the product, Take a picture of what they created and send oh, it fun. to us. Yeah, um, and that's great. what I'm really getting excited about. Well, we'll you know, one of that. one of the things about launching in December is that we have a lot of uh, presents that are going under Christmas trees. Yeah, so we're not going to see those pictures till next month, and I can't well, we'll, wait. We'll put them up. So that's all we have time for this week. Come join us again next week on the St. Paul Forum.